Hey everyone, when I was watching the World Games back in 2022, one of our patrons pointed out that German player Stefan Doscher basically only throws backhands and almost never throws a flick. I was pretty sceptical about this because surely a player at the World Games has a wide throwing repertoire, especially given that Doscher plays on the O-line and especially given the greater versatility and variety in throwing we saw across the tournament, with hammers, scubas and offhand throws seeming to be more prevalent. So as I tracked every turn at the World Games, I also kept track of every throw that Dosha made. In total, Dosha made 59 throws, 52 backhands, 6 flicks and 1 offhand backhand, meaning about 88% of Dosha's throws were dominant hand backhands. So why take a player like Dosha? In the club scene, Dosha is known as a potent deep threat, and he did score his fair share of goals, but at the World Games, his predominant role was to bounce the disc from the side of the field back into the middle and to maintain flow. I can't really pinpoint why Dosha didn't get thrown too deep more, it's not like Germany were a super conservative team that didn't turn over, but banging it deep just didn't seem like a big part of the German O-line strategy. Dosha is a really excellent defender, occasionally getting crossed over to the D-line when there were a string of breaks. It's clear that the German roster had no room for players who weren't elite defenders, they generated so many more break chances than the other top four teams, and part of that is a lack of clinical conversions on their side. But in those sloppier games like against Canada, or the USA-Germany upset and pool play, the Germans tended to come out ahead, struggling more in the really clean games like the bronze medal game against Colombia. But what I want to highlight the most is Dosha's insatiable desire to get the disc. In these clips, he's often really wide open or saving a teammate from a high stall situation. And then when he gets the disc, Dosha is really good at finding early stall throws and keeping the flow going. In the US-Germany game, Dosha released the disc in under 1 second over 25% of the time, and released the disc in under 3 seconds over 80% of the time. More often than not, especially on the left sideline, Dosha turns inwards and looks to centre the disc before looking for the shot forwards. There's this particular throw that he mostly throws to Nico Müller, this high release lefty lee pass from the left sideline across to the middle of the field that is an absolute cheat code for Dosha that he uses over and over and over to get the disc back into the main handler's hands and to break through the defence. As a player who's not responsible for taking lots of throw and risk, it's so important to be willing to go backwards as well and Dosha is always really happy to find the easy backwards pass, especially into the middle of the field. And despite his lack of variety of throws, he didn't suffer in the turnover percentages really. Across the 5 games and 59 passes, Dosha was involved in 3 throwing related turnovers. One of his attempted flicks was a poor decision, Troutman did not have enough separation and was nearing the sideline, so Dosha really had to rifle the throw. You can tell in general watching Dosha's flicks that they're not quite as comfortable as his backhand. He also had 2 turnovers on the backhand side and that was one of those lead passes that he just put a little too far out in front. I think given how many of these kinds of passes he took on, overcooking one was pretty inevitable, so I'm fine with the decision here, it's just execution. This final one is a classic throw into an upline poach, that's partly on Dosha's decision and partly structural. I'm going to talk more about poaching in the last video I make about the World Games. Three turns on 59 passes puts Dosha right around the German completion rate in general. Miles making a lot happen for Germany as a cutter. Is the reason we find 88% backhand surprising because we undervalue the power of the backhand? When Felix chatted with John Sandal after they won the World Masters Championship back in 2022, John talked about how when getting his players to play better zone offence and when teaching players hex offence, he made players practice by only throwing backhands. I mean, I like throwing overheads and blades as much as the next guy, well, maybe a little bit more than the next guy actually, but there's something to be said for expanding your skill set by having a constraint placed upon you. Like, would Dosha be as good at this pop through backhand if he knew he had the around flick to look for afterwards? Probably not. Am I saying that you should deliberately put constraints upon yourself? No, not for more than like one or two training sessions. But the point I'm making is Dosha is a blueprint of how you can be an elite player despite a slight limitation. But hold on, are we not putting enough responsibility on the defense for letting this happen? Over Dosha's 5 games, only the US made him throw more than one flick, every other team just sort of let him play in his comfort zone. And the US kind of got lucky with this I think. They played force middle, meaning they happened to be marking backhand sometimes, leaving the lefty flick lane open. However the one turnover is a forced backhand point where the US are trapping Dosha on the sideline. 
that's a good situation for the Americans to try and manufacture. Across all the teams, there seems to be no concerted effort to force Dosha to throw a flick. I think they could do so much better. This starts with scouting. To be able to take advantage of the fact that Dosha is more comfortable throwing backhands than flicks, you have to know that he's more comfortable throwing backhands than flicks. And it seems like none of the teams were really that aware of this. Other sports are obsessed with this kind of information, right? In football, playing against a winger who is one-footed so they have to cut inside, or marking a basketball player who you know prefers to drive to the basket on one side, is seen as a massively useful piece of information for the defender to do their job better across the game. I'm really obsessed with this sort of thing, right? The whole offense mistake series just asks the questions, what are weird things that offenses do and how can we take advantage of them? With better scouting, we could be asking this question on more micro situations, like how do we take advantage of their reset system, or their end zone set, or how they filled the pull, and then we can get granular, looking at players' throwing preferences, their release points, and more. And actually, I did find one team where they did take advantage of Dosh's throwing preferences, and that was the Belgian Open team at EUC. Check out these points. Belgium are a flattish force flick all the way through this point until Dosha catches the disc on the breakside sideline. Landed a crown switches the force, trapping Dosha on the sideline, but the communication doesn't quite get to the downfield players. Again here, Belgium are a pretty strong force flick, but when Dosha gets it, Landed a crown takes away more of Dosha's backhand and tries to make him throw a flick. You can see the same again later in the point, Dosha this time hitting the early flick reset. But then for the goal here, De Kran can't seal the backhand and Dosha pops it in for the goal. That one very high, but Samuel Boyton Mueller, great presence of mind. Is this sort of thing going to lead to a turn every time? Definitely not. It wasn't even really that successful for Belgium here. But doing this kind of thing across multiple different scenarios, reacting to the preferences of multiple systems and players can just add one or two more turn opportunities per game, which could swing the result of a tight match. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out our Patreon for more instructional videos and training drills. Thanks to Double Happiness for supporting this video, you can check out their design services using the links below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The fall over, oh he tries to get up, but Lanamatos gets nothing but grasping, clutching at the grass, and the score for Stefan Dosha.